Hi, it's Dan. I'm back again. This is our third video to show you some things that I've come up with. The first was how to coat bullets with high-tech bullet coating. I tell you, that's a great way to go. It's a lot better than uh, dealing with all the wax. And if you're not doing it, check out that video. The second video was with a machine that I made to go with the star sizer. And, and once you've coated your bullets, then you can take and size them, and you size them almost automatically and up to 2,000 an hour. It's really neat. And this third video is something that I have come up with to take and uh, deprime and size cases after they've spent. And it, this is just a, a game changer if you want to get rid of all the dirt and the dust around your, site, your uh, loading machine. As I said, I've come up with a, a, a new combination of how to take and deprime cases and size them removing all the dust and so forth from your loading machine. This is a single stage press. It's just the inexpensive partner press from RCBS and it will handle anything that I've put at it so far. And it is it's really a game changer for me because I just hated having all of that primer dust and uh, all the primers on the floor or around me and it just would clog up my machine. Now when I load I'm telling you what it's like I'm loading a brand new case every time that goes in my machine. So I encourage you, if, if you are tired of all that stuff, you need to take a look at this. This is really something. All right, so what we have here is the same type of process that I had for the bullet uh, sizing machine. Now I've taken and applied it to sizing the cases. So what happens is you turn it on and it comes up and it pushes out the old primer and sizes it and then it comes back up I'm having to do this by hand because I don't have the, the air hooked up to it right at the moment, but it's the same setup. And you see, now catching the primers is also a problem. So uh, I found this guy by the name of, of Tom, and he has made a primer catcher. He calls it primercatchers.com, and uh, it'll go for many different types of single stage presses, and uh, it just slides right down on top of that. And then when your primer pops out, it goes into this, falls in the tube, and goes into the bucket. It's really a neat thing. Primercatchers.com. You ought to give them a check out. All right. So what we've got here is, is a, a system that, that works semi-automatically. You still have to feed them in there, but you're no longer having to do it by hand. You can sit down in the air conditioning and just run it to your heart's content. No problem. I'm going to show you how it works. What we have here is we have cases that... Uh, need to have the primer taken out of them and sized. So what I've done is I've taken and I've put this uh, primer catcher on there. It'll catch the, the primers that are pushed out and uh, every one of these things is going to work and it simply works on a process the very same way that the, uh, the bullet sizer did, but it's much slower because you don't wanna, you're going to feed each one of them in there by hand and then they're going to go up, size them, push the primer out and then that comes out and you load another one right in there. And they go right up and down. And the primer falls out. Now you can adjust this to be faster or slower. Uh, I would advise that if uh, you start doing this, you should do this kind of slowly because you don't want to get in a hurry with this. You need, it takes a little timing to get your uh, loading process right. And uh, it works really good because these things are coming out. They're ready to go. And they just, it sizes every one of them. And it drops the primer out. So it's very, very simple. I know someone's going to ask, uh, do you lube the cases? Yes, I take the whole pile that I've got in my box and I spray a little bit of lube on top. Sort of mix them up, let them sit for a while so that they've just got enough there to do the job. If you do too much, it's going to be sticky and uh, these cases are light and they may pull back out as you're doing it. So uh, you just have to judge how much you need to put on there, but you should always have a little bit of lube on there in order to do this. I'm going to uh, put these in the uh, tumbler and they'll be cleaned up and shiny and pretty when I get ready to use them. You're probably looking at this saying, hey, you know, that looks kind of nice. Uh, I just don't know how to get all that working. Well, in my previous video, when I talked about how to size bullets, 
uh, I used this setup that I have over here on the side and I used all of these same components to make this work and you can see how they work but let me just tell you what you've got. You've got an on and off switch, you've got a timer that times all that that timer is doing is how long it dwells at one end and how it goes to the other end and how long it stays there. So that's all this timer is doing. And, but this is what controls, this is a solenoid, and this is what controls the speed at which it goes up and down, up and down. So the further you unscrew this little thing with a, a, a flat blade screwdriver hole in it, uh, you know, that's how fast, it's going to go faster and faster, up to a, a, a maximum limit. That's okay, but if it goes real fast, it's going to make it difficult for you to deal with. So I have it timed what's convenient for me. So uh, I've just used this. When I decide to size bullets, I'll just readjust this to where it adjusts the timer. And I've put marks on the other side of this on the numbers so that I can see where to set it for the other one. So it makes it very simple. And the only parts that I have made that are different, that I duplicated, are the cylinder, which I have the cylinder here and the cylinder there, and the connection, which is right there, and that connects it as well, and, and right there. So uh, that's basically it, along with this sliding uh, me mechanism that I came up with, how to adjust the timing of it. That's critically important to be able to adjust it. You want to adjust it all the way in, say like this one right here. You can hear it hit the end. That's, that ram is hitting right back here. And then when it comes this way, it's hitting right there. So you want that ram, and I'm just showing you on this one because that one's harder to get to. Uh, you want that to, to work that way every single time so that it doesn't just end halfway up. You want it to go all the way in and all the way out. Now, that said, there are other ways to control the amount of throw. They make little magnetic uh, sensors that will fit on the sides of these things and you can adjust it that way and those sensors will, that will just as far as it will let it go. So if, if that's not convenient for you and you want to put those on there, you can do that and it will work that way. Another thing is that uh, you've got to have the solenoid because that's what directs the air in and out. And one side of it brings it up one way, the other side of it, this is a double acting cylinder and it makes it go the other direction. So that's essential. As far as the timer is concerned, I could just as easily adjust this with, by doing the switch and not use the timer at all. And, and you could do it that way, just have a button right here, or you could have a foot switch that would do the same thing. You would just put a foot switch and do that. Uh, you, you could eliminate this altogether if you wanted to. That's probably about $85, $90 for this and the, the connection down there. Maybe slightly more. Uh, so there's lots of different ways that this can be accomplished. Uh, I've done it this way because I already had the parts set up right here. So all I did was I just applied these parts. And when I want to use this one, I just take and unplug it right here and plug that one in. And I plug this one in. And bingo, this is working. And I've had it all right on one simple uh, cabinet that uh, I can have ch shelves down here to put my supplies on, my cases, my bullets, whatever I'm using. It's a very simple situation and circumstance for you to use. I, I like it a lot. It's important to be able to time this thing properly so that it reaches the full extent of the ram on the upswing and full extent of the ram on the downswing. So that's what this is for. This is a little sliding uh, mechanism by you tighten it by these things right here and you you adjust this up and down because when it comes down this way it wants to make this kind of click. Hear it? Hear it hitting? And so when you hear it hitting both ends of the, the power this is important for that ram because if you'll stop and think about it if it doesn't reach the full extent of the ram there's nothing to stop it and it's going to be applying that full pressure and uh, that's not exactly what you want. You want it to run to the full extent on each end. So when you're timing it, just that can slide up and down and then you can mark it where it is if you need to move it or change it or do anything like that. So I would, uh, I, I would say that this is the way to adjust that and the best way. Uh, there are other ways to do that. You can adjust this up and down so that it doesn't have to come as high up. Uh, this, this process could also 
work for uh, the other stages of your single stage press. Just unscrew this, put on your other die, and you could use it that way for those things as well. So this is quite versatile. Versatile. If you're using a, a single stage press for your work, this can work for you. Now I have it set up for this press, and this is a very simple basic press. It'll do all that you need it to do. Uh, it's not glorious or fine, or it costs $75 approximately, and uh, it's a pretty cheap press, but it's worked absolutely phenomenal for me. Uh, I think you ought to give it a try, and uh, you can get these small parts from me. They're not uh, all that expensive. You don't have a whole lot that you need to buy uh, from me. The other parts you can get, I've gotten them from Granger. Uh, you can get them through that way. Uh, I don't supply those parts. I'll, I'll give you a list at the end of this so you can see uh, where to, uh, to order them and how much they are. So uh, just give them a try, and uh, I think you'd enjoy this process. If you want them, just let me know. I can send you the parts. Thank you for watching.